everyone, I am the Miniac and welcome to an episode I call Honey, I Shrunk the Car. I'm just kidding. This is a classic Mini. It's kind of cool, isn't it? No, you're not being deceived. What you see here actually is that small. This is a 1992 Rover Mini British Open Edition. So, very unique and really cool actually it actually was in this color racing green not british racing green this car came from england so it was racing green so a little backstory with the classic minis in 1959 sir alec isagonis unveiled the original mini which was also which was known as the austin 7 and the morris mini minor this car was unveiled in april and in august of 1959 the cars went on sale now this is 2019. This is the 60th birthday of Mini, and in a couple of months or so, they're going to be releasing the 60th birthday edition, and you'll get to see that on this channel as well, as well as some other little things leading up to that, so stay tuned for that. This car, though, has a 1,275cc engine, which originally put out about 56 horsepower. The car apparently had upgraded rockers and a carburetor, a HIF44 carburetor, put into this car, so it might have more horsepower than it originally had. So, to get in the car, you have to go to the right side of the Mini, which is the correct side. And inside, not much going on here. You have two buckets, you have a bench in the back, you have an upgraded shift knob. This is kind of cool, though. So you got that. Most of the interior is original. The current owner thinks that this might have been cloth in the center at one point and that it was replaced with vinyl, but it looks fairly original inside here. The green piping on the seats, the original steering wheel with the mini logo right in the middle, upgraded stereo over there. And apparently the previous owner had added this little thing here. So let's see, you're only supposed to blow the bloody doors off. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty clever. So if we go around to the boot area, not much in here. Kind of cool that Mini, that the classic Minis had the, the battery in the trunk, much like the R53 generation. There's the fuel tank. Now the fuel tanks were either five to six gallons, possibly seven gallons, possibly more than that. Um, they might have upgraded them later on to 9.3, something like that, but sure what the fuel tank capacity on this one but it looks like it might be the nine gallon variation on it the original jack is in here as well the original spare tire is missing and difficult to close pretty cool he has the original number plate this is kind of cool that it says cooper's garage down here i don't know exactly if there's any connection with john cooper there but that'd be kind of cool if it was so that's kind of neat. And the original badging right here. Now, how do I open the bonnet? There it is. So there's that 1,275cc engine. There's the upgraded carb. Looks like an upgraded cover here. There's the radiator. The radiator actually vents into the uh, fender. So it's kind of neat. And the hood is so tiny I can hold it up with one hand. <laughs> so. These look like the original headlights. It's kind of cool. Now, there is some rust on the car, but for what it is, the owner says he's going to do some repairs on it at some point, but right now he's enjoying just driving this little car, and that's something you don't get to enjoy very often with a classic car. But this is just fantastic. For you folks out there who have the European parcel shelf, this is kind of what it's based off of, the ones, the shelf that you can get from the R53. So, lots of little places to store things. Really cool. There's that rag top. Looks like it's a power rag top, actually. This is like flying a small plane. You have to be real familiar with your passengers. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been in small planes before. I've never been in a small plane. No, I've never been in a car this tiny. It's very cozy. is that the uh, spinometer cable makes a crap lot of noise. <laughs> and from what I understand, it's a real chore to change them on this car because you have to take the engine off its mounts and at least 
tip it so you can get access to the place where it attaches to the transmission. This is insane. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video with a 1992 Rover Mini. Until next time, remember, life is too short to drive a boring car, so drive a Mini. I'll catch you later.